Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to filter a report based on whatever filter you set in a related form. This is something people ask me about all the time. You got a form, right? Like a customer list or an order list or whatever, continuous form. You want to be able to filter or sort that form and then have a report that you can print out that has exactly the same records that you have in the form. How do you do that? Well, that's what we're gonna see how to do today in today's video. Now, this is a developer level video, which means there's gonna be some VBA, not much, like eight lines of code max. It's not that hard. It's just knowing where to put them. So if you never programmed in VBA before, go watch this video first. All right, this will teach you all you need to know to get started with VBA. And if you don't know about filtering forms, go watch this video too. It teaches you how to filter forms. Okay, go watch all three of these. These are free. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch them. Come on back. Okay, here we are in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website. If you want a copy of it, then go get a copy of it. Now, in this database, I've got a customer list form. It's got all my customers in it. And let's say I wanna be able to filter these results. Let's say filter by state equals Florida, all right? And then maybe sort it by first name, okay? Now I wanna print this, all right? Now we don't print forms, we, no, we print reports, people. Remember, forms are for on the screen. Reports are for printing or for making PDFs or for sending pretty emails, okay? But how do we get this set of filters into a report? All right, that's gonna involve just a little bit of programming. First, we need a report though. So let's copy, I got this blank R in here, it's just a blank report. You could start from a create blank new report if you want to, but I already got this guy set up with my parameters. So I'm gonna copy and paste it, call it customer list R, okay? And then we're literally just gonna design this guy and steal the elements out of the form that I wanna use. So we're gonna move this over here. I'm gonna delete that. We don't need a report header or a report footer. I'm gonna design this guy. Now watch this, design that guy. And come over here to the reports properties, set the record source equal to where you're getting your data from, which is customer T. Now if filters and order buys and stuff come in here, just delete those, delete that, delete that. Okay, we wanna make sure there's no filter and then no order by set in the report itself, okay? Then take whatever fields you want out of here, like first name, last name, state, whatever you want. Just make, make the form however you want it. Now just copy those, paste them in the details section. Okay, we can shrink that up now. And then I want the labels on the top, so click, click, click. I'm holding the shift key down, by the way. Copy, click on the page header, paste. Now the Font color is white, so we're just gonna format that to black. So we can actually see it. Or if you want pretty colors, put pretty colors in there, I don't care. Oh, wrong one. Not the background color, the foreground color. Okay, now, save it, close it, close it. All right, open it up. Now, if you open up your customer list now, or I click print preview, you get everybody, that's fine, all right? Let's make a button from this form to open up the report. So right click, design view. We don't use the wizard people, right? Copy, paste. We're gonna stick this button over here. This is gonna be open report. All right, right click, build event. All right, oh, we're command 17 click. I forgot a step, I always do this. And I leave this in the video because I want you to remember to do this too. If you come in here and you see command 17 click, don't do that. I used to do that all the time. Alex used to yell at me, my right hand man, Alex. So we're gonna give this button a good name, go to all, not command 17. Cause you look at it later in your code and you're like, what? what's command 17, all right? We're gonna be open report button. All right, give it a good name. Yeah, I used to be lazy like that too, and I used to not bother, but it, it, yeah, it, it makes a difference. Just making your code more readable. All right, what's this button gonna do? Do command dot open report. What report is it? Customer list R, comma, this is important, comma, AC view preview. 
If you don't specify preview, it's going to be spitting out your printer waste and paper. We don't like that. All right. Save that. Close it. Close it. Close it. Open it up. All right. Open the report. There's our report. We're good. Now, the report doesn't know what to do. You can set a filter in here if you want to, right? Filter by Florida. Hit open report. It's still going to give you everybody. So what we have to do, now you can't very easily control the report from the form. Because once the report opens, it kind of does its own thing. It's not like forms where you can open a form and then make some changes and just load some data and resort it. No, 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 no. It's much, much easier to have the report do its own jazz. All right, let reports format themselves. So what we're gonna tell this report is, hey, when you open up before you start doing stuff, before you start writing stuff on the page, I want you to get the filter and the sort information from this form. Okay, so that means the only way you should be able to open this report is from that button. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Go to design view. Now we need to get into the code behind this report. Now I got a button I put up on my, my toolbar up here to view the code, but you, you might not have that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna open up the properties for the form, or for the report, excuse me, All right? Go to event and go to on open, All right? On open. This is code that's gonna run when the report opens. Duh, right? Okay, what are we gonna do in here? We're basically gonna say, my filter is going to be equal to his filter. All right, so me dot filter, that's the reports filter, equals forms. What's the name of the form? It's customer list f dot filter. So set my filter property equal to that form's filter property. Okay? That's really all you got to do. Now, there's some other baggage that goes with it because you got to turn the filter on. By default, the filter's not on, or it may or may not be on depending on the, the design properties. So we're going to force that filter to turn on now. Me.filter on equals true. And that's it. Save it. All right, let's close this. Close it. Close it. And open it up. Boom. Look at that. This this report opened up and it said, hey, give me your filter property and bloop, stuck it right in there. Okay, but we're not we're not quite done yet. We're not quite done yet because watch this. If we close this, close that, open up the list again. Now, this guy's filter has been turned off. If I open up the report, it still has that filter in it. Okay, so what we got to do is we got to say. Actually, go back into the report. Design view. All right, go back into that code. All right, there. Okay. We're going to say forms customer filter f dot filter on is what we want to set that to. Okay. Because we don't always want to turn it on. We only want to turn it on if his filter's on. Okay. So save it. Close it. Close it. Now open it and that guy's filter doesn't turn on. See, I wanted to show you the true first so you, so you got it, right? But we're only gonna set it equal to filter on if this guy's on. All right, so now if I come in here and I filter by New York and open it up, his filter's on, this guy's filter turns on, right? And if I turn that filter off and run it again, again, I get everybody, okay? Now we can also do the same trick with order by. Okay, in fact, watch this. I'm gonna copy these. Copy and paste. And there's me.filter and there's also me.order by, it's called. All right, so me.order by equals the forms order by and me order by on equals the filters or the forms order by on. Do that, do the filter, do the order by, same thing. Save it, close it, close that, close that, close this, close him, close her, close me. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, kiss his ass. <laughs> what movie is that from, people? <laughs> All right, let's sort by first name. I think we already were sorted by first name. Let's sort reverse order by first name. There we go. Open the report, bang. 
All the people, same sort. Let's filter and show only people from Texas. There's only one. Open it up. Bam. There you go. Do that. Remove the filter. And let's sort by last name. And Floridian. Open it up. Bang. There you go. Do that. And that's it. Four lines of code. I said I said six later. I was gonna do it with an if then statement because you could you could do an if if and check and see if the filter's on, blah 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 blah. But I think it's better to do it this way. Just open it up and just set those properties. Design view. How come the code button's not working? There it goes. That's it. Four lines of code. I can name that code in four notes now. <laughs> um, but that's, I mean, that's it. This is one of the popular questions people always ask me. Like, okay, I got a form. I want to set up set my parameters, set my filters. Blah, blah, blah. Now, how can I get a report to match that? There you go. Filter on, order by on. Do you see how cool this VBA stuff really is? Once you get in there, there's so much you can do with it. I love it. If you want to learn more cool stuff like this, I've got hours and hours and hours of really awesome developer courses on my website where I teach you all the ins and outs and everything you possibly could need to know about programming in Visual Basic for applications with Microsoft Access. So check it out. That is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something, people. Live long and prosper. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing free four hours go watch it and okay okay a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course so i do now have a quicker microsoft access for beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes and no i didn't just put the video on fast forward <laughs> but i'll put a link to this down below as well now if you like level one level two is just a dollar that's it one dollar and that's another whole like 90 minute course Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay. Want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. 
So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my access forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.